For decades, there has been one person at the top of the fried chicken throne, and his name is Colonel Sanders. But all of that changes today, when I take the reins as the king of fried chicken by telling you the secret to making the perfect fried chicken. I searched far and wide for this information, and I'm gonna share it with you rather than building out a fried chicken empire. The secret to the juiciest, most delicious fried chicken on the planet is to brine it. Let's show you how. As you can see here, we have quite a few different ingredients laid out. The most important ingredients are the salt and the water. At the basic level, a brine is just a salt water solution. The science behind a brine is fairly simple, and a brine is different than, say, a marinade. Without getting too deep into the science, a brine's main job is to do some stuff to the proteins of the meat, which allows for more moisture to get inside of the meat, resulting in the juiciest chicken, pork, or whatever it is that you're brining. I'm not a meat scientist, but my friend Jess Prowls is, so maybe she can explain it in greater detail. The result is the juiciest chicken you've ever had in your life. While the brine is happening, we also want to incorporate some flavor. To do that, we're going to add a few different ingredients along with the brine. The first step in all of this is to add in the salt. I'll have a detailed recipe link in the description, but the first step is to go ahead and dissolve the salt. We're going to add that to the pot, then we're going to put it over medium heat. We're going to stir it with a whisk until it's fully dissolved. While that's going on, we're going to slice the two lemons and the orange that we have here. And you may notice how beautiful that knife looks while I'm slicing these. By now, I'm sure you're wondering, what brand is it? And do you have an affiliate link? <laughs> well, you're in luck because I do. This is a Bear Creek knife and I'm absolutely loving it after using it for the past two months. Check those out with the link in the description. Now that our salt is dissolved, we're gonna add in the other ingredients. Again, there's no right or wrong answer here, but I just throw them all in while the water's still warm and that's gonna let everything kind of steep together, if you will. Now, before we go to adding in any meat, be sure to let this cool down to at least room temperature. You do not want your meat to start the cooking process at all. Another little trick here, uh, don't be afraid to add in ice cubes if you're trying to do this in a hurry and you need it to cool down. I wasn't in a hurry, however, so I let this cool down in the fridge overnight. Now you'll notice a poorly filmed shot as I start to put our chicken legs in the brine. I was running late for another shoot that morning, so I couldn't set everything up. However, we're simply throwing chicken legs in a pot of water here. And I want these chicken legs to sit in the brine for 8 to 12 hours, so I did this the first thing in the morning. I covered it up and set it back in the fridge until that evening. Now that we're ready to start cooking, we set the pot of chicken out so it can be coming up to room temperature before we go to fry it. While that's going on, we're gonna get our dredge ready. We're gonna have two bowls, one with our seasoned flour mixture and one with our buttermilk. We have about five to six cups of all-purpose flour here and we will season it all with salt, pepper, garlic powder, chili powder, paprika, onion powder, we're gonna add in some cayenne. I love the cayenne in this. It gives it great flavor and a little kick of spice. And then we're gonna throw in some lemon pepper to finish it off. We'll give that a really good mix and prepare our dredging station. We're only using chicken legs tonight, but don't be afraid to use any part of the chicken for this. We're gonna start by taking a leg and tossing it in the flour mixture. Make sure every inch of this chicken is covered in the seasoned flour. Then we're gonna give it a buttermilk bath. Be sure to submerge the entire piece of chicken and get everything coated in the buttermilk. Then we're going back into the flour mixture. This time we're going to make sure that it's well coated. Another secret that the colonel wouldn't tell you is to try and squeeze the flour into the chicken. By doing this, it'll create ridges and those ridges pick up more flour, which makes for the extra crispy bits. And that's what we want. I want all the extra crispy bits. Once you feel like this chicken is coated well enough, Place it on a wire rack and do that for every piece you intend to fry. Now let's get the oil hot. I personally love the smell of fried chicken in the kitchen, but I also love my wife, which is why I'm gonna be frying this outside since our kitchen was recently cleaned. Since we have this electric fryer, we can easily do that, so no complaints here. I do recommend using peanut or vegetable oil for this, and we're gonna heat it up somewhere between 320 and 340 degrees. I fry this a little bit lower than I do most other things. Rule number one, do not overcrowd your fryer. Do this in batches and do it safely. And this is gonna fry for about 10 to 12 minutes. Just make sure that the chicken is golden brown, very crispy, and cooked all the way through. This looks so good, but is it worth all the time that's gone into it? Yes, it is. It is so juicy. That is phenomenal. I really wish you could taste this. It is just so juicy. And that's all because of that brine. 
Hopefully after watching this video, you have the confidence to take down the Colonel yourself. If not, I'm always here to be your fried chicken leader. Be sure to hit that subscribe button if you think our chicken is better than the Colonel's. And if you think his is better, hit the like button. Either way, the recipe link is in the description. Be sure to let us know what you want to see us cook next, and thanks for watching. Oh,